Inside Boxing's Throwdown. I'm Aurelio Martinez, Stephen Johnson, and we're going to come back and follow, uh, continue to recap. Now we're going to recap, Steve, the fights that were on uh, ESPN uh, yes. tonight. Okay, and uh, we had some good ones, and we got uh, fighters that uh, we want to keep our eye open and uh, things like that. So, so let's talk about that. You had Better Bit fighting that card, and you had uh, uh, Yes Indeed Reed, okay, mm -hmm. Mike yes, uh, Ramirez. Indeed. And you know, you, t you take top rank, and, and it's almost like, uh, you know, they make a move because. Both Reed and, and Ramirez are top ranked fighters, so you put them together, and, and then the outcome decides whether you're going to put your money in A or B, or both or none. Okay, so obviously uh, uh, the fight went on, and, and the outcome happened. Uh, let's let's talk about Reed. Did he? Uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, it's been no secret that we're fans of Mike. Yes, indeed, Reed. I followed Mike <clears throat> since he was up. 16 years old, you know, um, that makes it makes it good six, seven years of following Mike. Um, last night, um, Saturday night there at Fresno, California, mm -hmm. um, he got destroyed. There's no other way to say it. He just flat out got destroyed. Uh, Ramirez, Jose Ramirez, uh, Olympian. Yep. You yep. know. Yep. <clears throat> um, has a height advantage over Mike. Um, it made it made him appear to look bigger, but he's not. Mike was probably. As big as I've seen him on radio, yeah. you know, he, he was in shape. He said all the right things. Um, he wasn't prepared for what Ramirez does. And, and once again, we had a slight advantage because Jose Ramirez has fought three Colorado boxers. Oh, yeah. I remember he yeah. fought uh, Daniel Calzada. He fought Calzada. Um, he fought um, uh, Rob Franco. Rob Franco and, and, and Manny. And, and Manny Perez. And Manny. Okay, yep. and he got wins over all of them. So he's he knows how to deal with veteran fighters. And I think it looked to me fairly obvious that his corner had decided, uh, Freddie Roach mm -hmm. had decided, uh, you know, let's go jump on him right away. Let's waste no time. Go jump right on him. And for the first round, they, it was competitive. They they went at it. But towards the end of the round, you saw where Mike got stung a couple of times. In the second round, uh, Ramirez, Ramirez, Ramirez wasted no time and blasted him out. You know, I, 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 I'm I with you. I, I think Mike Reed, uh, uh, we follow him. Uh, uh, wish him well and and, uh, and kind of follow his career because because he's got some talent. Okay? Yes. And I'm gonna tell you what uh, to get in there with Ramirez is no joke for anybody. I mean, uh, he's the real uh, deal. He's he's probably the one that's high up on top ranks list to take over the uh, the uh, the limelight and take over the money and the big promotions and the highlights uh, uh, out of uh, most of their uh, their their. Uh, after Terrence Crawford. Sign. After uh, Terrence Crawford. You know, and I'm, we'll talk about that in our open discussion, but I'm still a little disappointed where they don't give Terrence Crawford the uh, the, the, the mic, the stage. But anyway, mm -hmm. going back to Ramirez, Ramirez is thing, and I'll tell you what, I, my, my honest opinion, my honest opinion, and I, I think what happened with, with uh, Mike, yes, indeed, Reed, is is I think, uh, I think he got shell-shocked, okay? I don't think he's ever been in, in such a big platform, such a big fight, and even though he, you can tell yourself, I'm ready for this, I'm ready for this, it's not until you're up in that stage and them lights come on that, boom, you, you're, you're, you're in there. There's nothing you can do, okay? And uh, uh, it's an enormous thing. It, it's, it's, it's something that uh, uh, I think just, just took him, took him uh, at the last minute and it affected him because, you know, he didn't, he didn't fight. He, he, uh, he gave Ramirez too much respect, uh, felt his power. But the thing about it is, when you're in, when you get to that level, uh, you cannot succumb. You cannot give your fighter respect. You cannot give him any indication that you're hurt or that a punch had any effect on you. There's a lot of mental things that happen, and because he was shell shocked, the mental, the, the mental aspect just went out the door. Well, you know, you know? Uh, I think one of the things good or bad about things nowadays we get to you know they give us a purse um a perspective and and the jose Ramirez got uh seventy five thousand dollars and mike we got thirty five thousand which yeah. meant that mike was the b-side so for their for us to even you know think that it was evenly matched as far as top rank was concerned i think we kind of get a perspective from there but going a little bit deeper into the fight um like i said i, I think you made a good point and i had asked before in uh, prior shows, mm. why didn't Top Rank have Mike headline a show 
in Washington, D.C., in yeah. his area. Yeah, you sure they did. never did that. Mm -hmm. And they put him a headliner here on ESPN, big time, Saturday night, and you might be right. Maybe and he's, the, that, he's never been there. He's never there. been at that level. They've never been at that level. Not even having never been in a main event. Yeah. You know, yeah. makes it, it made it a little tough for him. Yeah. Um, I'm concerned so, now what happens to Mike. Um, well, as you far have, as top you, rank is concerned. You have to be concerned because I think he could, as a fighter, and his team, I think they can. I, I think they can grasp all that, take it into into experience as an experience level, learn on it, and come back and be a much better uh, performer under the big lights. Okay, the problem, like you say, is what happens now with Top Rank's decision. You know, top Rank will drop you like a dime, <laughs> bam. You know, but they're they're a business. Yeah, top they're Rank is, investment. They're, is. They're, they're a big business, and they they make investments and and. You know, just like, you know, Mike Alvarado, they dropped him after they, they felt that he couldn't bring the big money in for him anymore. That's the way they work. So now, whether they think they can bring big money with Mike Reed or not, uh, remains to be remained. Well, let's, let's, to be honest with you, I think, I think they'll probably uh, 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 cut him from I, the roster. You know, I don't, I don't know about that, but let me, let me just say this. I think the one thing we had last weekend or two weekends ago, we had... Another one of my guys I know from back east, and that's Alantis Sly as a Fox. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He got beat. Father-son combination, okay? Got beat, yep. okay? Um, made it a little bit competitive at the end, but still he got beat. Um, then you come back, and then we have Mike Reed and his dad. Yep. And they can compete. In our third segment, we are going to talk about talk open about discussion. It. We'll talk more about father-son combinations. But for Mike, I don't know um, if, if top rank drops him. But I think that his next fight with top rank will be a, a statement-making fight. And I could see that possibly being somebody right. like against Mike Alvarado. And whoever would get, survive that stays right there in the mix with, with top rank, and the loser would be gone. Well, you know, you make a good point because uh, <clears throat> even though top rank released Mike... Um, uh, and, and he's still in their mix. They still got their eye on him because he's been fighting on a couple of their cards because they want to... They want to. They want to see if he can still bring. Mike's still a draw. If he can bring the know, cash to the table, right? Mike's so. still a draw, and like I said, that's that'll be good. That'll be Mike and Mike, Mike Reed and Mike Alvarado. Okay. But that's a fight I like to see. Well, good, good. Okay, let's move on. What about uh, uh, Archer? Better be. Yeah, Archer. Yeah, better be. Uh, and he taught. Um, is he? Is he? Is he the real deal? I mean, is he? Is he up there in that top? Top level of performance? Well, let me tell you, he took on Enrico. I can't remember what Enrico's last name was. Okay? <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, he was he, the experienced veteran. You know, had a lot yeah. for him. And <clears throat> I I disagree with a lot of people that I was watching the fight with. You know, they mm -hmm. thought the fight was, I, I wouldn't say the fight was boring, but then I would say the fight was boring. If you get what I mean when I say it wasn't. Because if you look at it just when you're waiting to see, let's see engaged, let's see engage some action. Yeah. No, it's not that kind of fight because really I'm going to tell you now and all you people now too. Archer Bitterbev, he's like, I compare him to like a, um, uh, what's the old guy that used to live up in the in the mountains in the hills? Um, not, not Paul <laughs> Bunyan type dude like that. He's just a hard man. Okay, yeah. you watch him fight, yeah. he's a hard man. He's not doing anything fancy, he's just coming. And it took him 12 rounds to finally to stop in Enrico because Enrico, bottom line, gave it all and ran out of gas. He just didn't have any more yeah. to give. Yeah. And that's what Better Bill is going to do. you got to remember, he's 12 0 with 12 KOs. Okay? And a lot of patience. Patience. A lot of patience. And a lot of real patience. strength, man. Just yeah. as strong as a, a mule. You know, and I, I tell you what, that's, I, I like when a fighter works off his strengths. He knows what he can do and he's not going to try to change that. So he's going to he's going to continue on his plan and as long as his uh, opponent doesn't do something to make him change, he's going to stay on his plan. And that's how it works. That's why he's got the 12 knockouts. Well, let me tell you, yeah. that's 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 another thing that's good about the light heavyweight division with with Andre Ward retiring. See, yeah. better be his name you know, for those of us who watched, and yeah. Andre Ward had even talked about him before. He knows he he's a guy that poses challenge to him because of his his physicality. Oh. He's just a, a strong man. Like physicality. Physicality. He's just a strong, hard man. I heard that last you know? night. And there's it's a, it's a tough thing to do uh -huh. against somebody, somebody that just keeps coming to you. So it would take a uh, it would take a fighter. Ten seconds. It would take a fighter like Better Bid, who is patient to exactly. do what he does. Mm -hmm. To see how I think it would be a tough fight to score if you get a boxer, a pure boxer, 
that can keep him off of him, you know, for 12 rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think, I, think, I think his patience is going to stay. It's not going to change, and I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to really take... It's going to take a lot to take him off his game. Okay? I'm just saying that. Now, Mike King, he's, 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 he's undefeated for a reason, and it's because he's, he's so strong, and I'm going to be on record. I like Arthur Bitterbev, and I think he's going to be a factor in the light heavyweight division for, for a few years now. It's going to be hard to get somebody to come and knock him off that pedestal. Yeah, and I don't, I don't see anyone in that light heavyweight division that, that, that's a true boxer that's going to be able to score and move and score and, and move. And back him off to, of him. To, 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 you got to get him frustrated. Okay, and I don't, I don't see anyone right now in that division that can do that. So, mm -mm. so I, ugly style. Yeah. Nothing about mm -hmm. him that you know. It's there's nothing about him where you say, oh wow, you got to watch this yeah. guy. Yeah. Unless you're like a guy like me and you, you've seen this background. Of what's going on with him? He's a tough Good. guy. He's a tough Good. guy. Good. All right, that's the end of our second step, second segment with Inside Boxing's Throwdown. Our third segment will come back. Open discussion. We're gonna have a little bit of a conversation here about father-son combinations and why. 90% of the time that they don't work to the degree of, of matching up to what the father did inside of the ring. So we'll talk about that when we come back. All right? Yeah. Thanks, Aurelio, for getting rid of that fly, man. He was bugging me that first segment. <laughs> I'm glad he disappeared the second segment. But as we do with every segment of Inside Boxing, throw down.